This is the Blossom Graduate Pediatric Orthopedic Video Series and I'm Satala Shraida, I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. In this video I will take you through how I do joint inspiration for common joints, uh, specifically uh, knee joint, hip joint and uh, elbow joint. I usually have low threshold to aspirate any swollen joints and I know that usually there is a reluctance to aspirate joints where they're inflamed. I always explain that the, the size of the vein is few millimeters while the size of the joint is in centimeters. The veins are usually connected to the heart. So theoretically it is safer and easier to take fluid from a, a swollen joint rather than from a vein. But because it is not a common procedure we do it on a daily basis, uh, there's kind of fear or reluctance to do it. Now let's take uh, the following example. Uh, we have a six-year-old boy, he uh, fell uh, a few weeks on his knee. Little cut on the medial side of the knee, uh, but he was okay. His knee became gradually swollen. He had no fever, and he was walking on it. All blood tests are normal, and he's fit and healthy otherwise, and he doesn't have any uh, hematological problem. Uh, aspirating the child's knee would help with the diagnosis. If the aspirate was blood, this would be inconsistent with the traumatic uh, knee he sustained. But if the aspirate was different, we need to investigate it further. Uh, based on the uh, child age and understanding, I usually do this procedure under local anesthesia. However, if the child is too young or not cooperative, I prefer general anesthesia. It's really very important to get the child and parent confidence in what you are doing. My little trick is that to explain to the child what I'm going to do, but I will give him full control what I'm doing. I always tell him that you are the brain, I am the hands. So uh, if I do anything that's painful, tell me stop, and I'll stop immediately. And in fact, we practice this a few times even before we start the procedure. Uh, I mark the area with, where I'm going to spray the joint uh, with a markup pen. I ask the nurse to put Emla cream for 20 to 30 minutes. I prepare all my equipment and syringes and all aspiration uh, away from the child, uh, maybe in a separate room, because sometimes children, when they see these needles, they can get scared. Uh, equally important, if there's a TV in the examination room, you can utilize it, or the parent phone uh, to put something for the child to distract them from the procedure. Uh, however, uh, interestingly, most of children, they would like to see what you're doing. Uh, after the emblem removed, uh, I usually prep the area with the chlorohexidine. Start from the center, going outward. And I usually use the holy drape, smaller drape with a hole, to cover the area. Again, at this stage, I re-emphasize to the child that although I'm doing the procedure, he is or she is in control. I usually start with the smallest possible needle. You can see the first injection, usually the child still feel it because the Imla cream numb just outside the skin. I put my needle and stop. I reassure the child this is probably the only thing or the only painful thing that we could feel. Before I inject, I always spray this should be standard. I usually use uh, lignocaine with adrenaline. This will reduce the risk of uh, the side effect of uh, lignocaine. I can give a larger dose and I inject very slowly. And I always assure the child if he feels any pain, he can ask me to stop and stop. As you can see in this video clip, he asked me, he felt that. And usually the first one, he, they do feel them. That's why I'm very slow at the beginning. Uh, as I inject my local anesthesia, I'll go toward the capsule gradually. And once you reach the capsule or, or you go through it, you have a very nice giving way feeling. And after that, when you aspirate, you can, f you can see the aspirate come into your uh, syringe. Uh, whether you reach the joint capsule or not, at this stage, I switch uh, to a bigger size needle. And the needle is still attached to the local anesthesia syringe. Again, as I dive toward the capsule, I'll try to infiltrate the area with more local anesthesia. 
it's really very important to keep this procedure uh, as painless as possible and this is usually very possible as you reach the capsule i usually say the capsule is the most painful area i i give more local anesthesia more generous and as i pierce the capsule there's usually very distinctive giving way feeling and after that you can aspirate uh, the cyanobyl fluid as as you can see in this video this exactly i just went through the capsule and you can see some turbidity fluid coming out at this stage i change my syringe to a, a new syringe you can see the cyanobyl fluid dripping out just put my finger here to stop it till i get my other syringe and as i spray it you can see uh, there's bit of turbid cyanobyl fluid is coming out easily two things I do at this stage uh, I want to check the turbidity of the fluid and the viscosity of the fluid so for a rough test to check for the turbidity of fluid you can see here the number uh, on the syringe when you turn it around you cannot see any number and even when you take it to the light you still cannot see the number so this is turbid fluid if you can see the numbers this, the fluid is less turbid uh, this is the syringe test, which we have a special video about it. Uh, I think it is video 19.3. Uh, you can see it later. You can see it goes in straight. So this is probably a, a good viscosity. At the end of the procedure, I install a few cc of local and long-acting local anesthesia in that inside the joint, and I clean the injection site and I dress it. And this is how I do a knee joint aspiration. Next, we'll move to uh, hip joint aspiration. Uh, most of hip joint aspiration now done under ultrasound guidance. It's really uh, important skills to learn how to use ultrasound machine. Now it has become an extended part of clinical examination rather than an investigation. And it is widely used in musculoskeletal practice. Let's start with some basic anatomy. This is the pelvis and the hip joint. Uh, number one point for the anterior superior iliac spine. Two is for the pubic tubercle, and three for the greater trochanter. And if we draw lines between these points, between anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle, and a line from greater trochanter to the middle of the first line, usually the hip joint is midway uh, through that line as pointed by the green dot uh, I placed. Uh, lateral to this area is the neurovascular bundle, which is usually around one to two finger press to the outside. So if you feel for the neurovascular structure uh, or for the pulsating artery, uh, if we put our probe uh, longitudinal, just lateral to the artery, uh, of course, after putting some gel, and we move it sideways, upside down till we get this picture. I'll freeze this picture to show you the important structures that you need to know. Uh, this curved red arrow points to the femoral head. Green arrow is mapping the neck of femur. And this large uh, red arrow points to the growth plate between the neck of femur and the femoral head. The green arrow again points to the neck of femur while the dash red arrow pointing toward the joint capsule. And here I'm mapping the joint space. And this is exactly the space we want to target the aspirator or uh, synovial fluid. Ideally, the needle should be coming from the side of the dash arrow. Uh, because it's perpendicular, it can catch the bigger area. But this is not essential. It depends which side of the paper you did. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it can come from either direction. Then under ultrasound screening, uh, guide your needle to go inside the joint. As you can see here, the tip of the needle piercing the muscles, then piercing the capsule, and with the tip sitting inside the joint. I just froze this picture to show the tip of the needle inside the joint, where the green arrow is pointing. Uh, once the needle inside the joint, I remove my probe, and then I clean the area from any uh, ultrasound gel, then I pull the stillet of my needle. If the joint is infected with pus, usually there's a pressure within the joint and you can see some drops of pus coming out as the case. Screw in my uh, syringe to uh, aspirate. Just 
from a different angle where you can see some of thick pus coming from this joint. And as I stated before, I usually do the uh, turbidity test, the strength test before I send them for uh, cell count, gravimus stain and culture and sensitivity. And we will finish off with a few words about the elbow joint inspiration. The elbow joint, uh, there are three important bony landmark. One is the lateral epicondyle, uh, then the radial head, and the elecranial process. There is usually a soft spot uh, between this area as pointed by the green arrow. Uh, directing the needle toward the joint through the soft spot usually leading to the joint. Sometimes you need to readjust the direction of the needle to get into the best joint space. In this child, there are only a few cc's of pus. Usually the elbow joint is much smaller than the hip joint or the knee joint. And with this, we reach the end of our video. I hope you find it useful. Uh, the clear passage is to have low threshold to aspirate any swollen joints. The question is that, do we have to aspirate any swollen joint? The answer for this is no. If the child is presented with the clear features of a uh, joint infection, then you need to wash it out and aspiration is not needed. Uh, alternatively, if the child is presented with typical features of transient synovitis, again, you don't need to spray the joint. But we are talking about uh, the equivocal cases where septic arthritis cannot be ruled out.